Hey, welcome to sunny Sunshine Canyon in Boulder. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about shoulders and hips and the relationship between the two. Uh, I had an athlete, an ex-pro here in Boulder that had hip problems for about three or four months and tried everything, rehab, needling, a lot of treatment. And we showed her one really, really simple exercise and uh, the next day she was running pain-free. And so an important concept is wherever your shoulders go, your hips will follow and vice versa. Okay, and we talk about a four knot complex. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so your two shoulders and your two hips talk to each other and they can talk to each other across or diagonally, but they signal to each other very, very strongly. So if you want really good hip function, you have to have really good shoulder function. And if you want really good shoulder function, you have to have really good hip function. Um, and then there's this other concept where we want to sort of start talking about um, you can use angular, you never really want to see angular movement in people, okay? So let's say you'll see on the swim trainers, people doing swimming like this with a very angular or sharp movement. And generally speaking, we don't want to see angular movement. It puts a lot of stress on the joints. And so this is really, really important. If you're um, 35 or older, you've got to start protecting your shoulders, okay? So what I mean by that is, and you can try it, try to get out of a swimming pool with this movement and you will not be able to get out of the pool. We need to use big muscles okay so we need to press with everything to get out of the swimming pool and in swimming you want to have we talk about the spinal engine for running well in swimming it's really really important and so watch how much I can move my hand through the water without using my shoulder muscles which are small muscles and now without loading the joints in these small tendons but using my lats and my intercostals and my serratus anterior the big muscles so I can I can Put my hand in the water and get all the way to there just by using my rib cage in Latin. This is pretty fixed, and you want that element in your swimming. If you start, if you focus on angular swimming, you're going to get sore shoulders, tight shoulders, and then tight hips. Okay, so we want to be able to use our ribs and our lats. We want this to be very, very mobile. You know, swimming is like almost butterfly. You need to be able to compress and open your ribs to help you swim because it takes a lot of pressure off your shoulders. Um, so this one exercise does all of the above. It'll wake up your spinal engine. It's great for thoracic and rib mobility. It'll help you breathe easier and then generate way more power in your swimming and also very good for your hip and shoulder posture. Okay, so watch carefully one time before you join in. You're going to link your fingers. And if I had to let my, if my fingers weren't gripping, my elbows would fly apart. Okay. Um, if I turn around, your rhomboids are linked between, but they actually work, your upper and lower rhomboids work in an oblique angle. So we're going to link our fingers and you want to turn to the side and you'll, you basically want to learn how to mobilize in this position because you'll link your, your rhomboids and your shoulder blades. So that's what's going on at the back. Link your fingers. Okay. We're going to, and sorry, a lot of time we're working in flexion. So you'll type, you'll eat, you'll ride a bicycle, um, you might be planking. All of this is round and so we, we need like an antidote we need to open up our shoulders or from swimming terms we're always doing freestyle do you do enough backstroke okay so link your fingers your elbows will fly apart i'm going to watch an elbow up at 12 o'clock and i'm going to watch it back around down all the way down to six o'clock and then i'm going to take watch that elbow and i'm going to go back up round down to six o'clock and then pick up this elbow and as I come around, I'm trying, I'm watching my elbow. It's very, very good to get your head up and over to the side. Watch how far my head goes to the one side. And here I want a sensation of I'm scooping through. So imagine if I was paddling a canoe backwards with my elbow. So I'm coming through on this side, up, round, down, coming through on this side. This puts a whole lot of goodness in your shoulders. It'll open up your shoulders, get your ribs and your intercostals, ease up your breathing. Okay, and it's very, very good for also teaching people that have been very controlled or tight, the head in the midline starting getting you used to this head over foot, which is very, very healthy for running. Um, so this is a fantastic sort of mobilization, opening up your shoulders. You don't need to do a hell of a lot of it. Um, I don't really like reps for this. I think like two minutes is enough. Um, and as a warm up, you can do the exact opposite for swimming. So you can go down and round and learn that, you know, by dropping this shoulder, I get this arm out of the water when I swim. So we can do it on a forward pattern as well. Just linking your shoulders, um, learning to use and mobilize your shoulder blades and these big muscles, okay, and sort of de-stressing and taking the stress off your shoulders. So there we go. But as your shoulders rotate and open, as your shoulders rotate and open, 
your hips will open up underneath you and it's fantastic for hip mobility as well. So there we go. There's a tip from Sunny Sunshine Canyon. Um, we're going to try to put more content and more helpful tips out there and let's all move better, feel better and have a better life. Okay, please share this with someone that you think it might help. Um, and if you have very round shoulders, take a picture and do these exercises for a week or so um, and let's see the before and after pics. Okay, thank you.